Hey folks, how's it going? I hope you guys are having a great time, great holidays, uh, happy new year. So we're in 2020 now, and hopefully um, by the time this video is released, it's hopefully 2020, still 2019 right now as, I, as I'm filming. But my 2020 resolution is very, very simple. It's adding a new review style and trying different things on this channel that will uh, hopefully better understand you in terms of what I'm talking about when I review things. So one of the ways that I found that can really help is adding demos into my reviews. So demos on YouTube, as you know, is a uh, controversial topic. It really doesn't work. My background was in neuroscience and uh, biology, uh, undergrad thesis in human hearing and perception. Uh, and I designed a binaural microphone uh, based on demoing accurately as possible. And the, at the end of the day, it's not really possible to convey that um, over any kind of media as of uh, 2020. So hopefully maybe this year something changes, but um, for now it doesn't. And the reason I'm incorporating demos regardless is the very fact that when I talk about certain things, for example, I could be talking about uh, how the strings sound on a certain type of speaker, uh, people have this image in their head. So it's more of an entertainment purpose, by better understanding you on, in terms of what I'm talking about when I actually play a track with strings and I talk about the string the texture and stuff like that, then you're better able to make that image in your head while you're listening to the speakers uh, plus whatever commentary I add into it. So it's a little bit of entertainment plus um, a little bit of better understanding into what I'm talking about. So that is the reason I'm adding demos. So by no means of a stretch, it's a, an accurate demo. It's a, it's a, it's a disclaimer right here, okay? Um, now, before we actually get into the review of the JBL 4429, please do consider subscribing. It does help us out a lot. And yeah, so let's get right down to it. Oh, and of course, like the video. Thank you. Now, as many of you know, I'm a big fan of JBL speakers. Namely, I own the JBL L300 amongst many other JBL speakers. And so this is very similar in that regard. Now, of course, the size is very, very smaller than the JBL L300. The L JBL L300 was a big ass monster. Now, the JBL L300 had a 15 inch woofer while this one has a 12 inch uh, woofer. Now, in this video, I'm gonna compare it against many different speakers like the Tecton Double Impacts I have, I have here on the side, um, as well as the Clips speakers and so on and so forth. Um, the main difference between my JBL L300 and the, uh, the JBL 4429 over here is the fact that the JBL L300 has a 15 inch woofer, has an aluminum mid-range uh, compression driver, one and a quarter inch, uh, while this has a titanium mid-range uh, driver that is two inch, so it's bigger um, compression driver, and it has a uh, 12 inch woofer instead of a 15 inch woofer. And it also has a uh, high frequency, ultra high frequency uh, 19 millimeter uh, transducer as well, also aluminum. And the JBL L300 had a, uh, what they call a, I think 007, um, it, it's, it's not 007, uh, 077 tweeter. And this was basically used in ambulance um, back in the day and stuff like that. So it's very good for high frequency and such. And it looks like a diamond. So that's a very, very cool looking uh, tweeter. Now with that all aside, uh, the main difference that I think you guys wanna hear is the sound difference. The sound difference is very, very simple. Um, the old JBL was a little bit more lively than the JBL 4429 he here. And in fact, I would say the JBL 4429 is not lively at all considering that it's a horn design. And I was very surprised by this in my uh, first impression video, which you can, you can find in the description below. But uh, yeah, it was very, very weird. Um, they just didn't have that lively characteristic to it. Now there's obviously a benefit to this and that is that you can crank it up. Um, this is one of the speakers where you can really crank it up to a maximum level, really party hard, and you will not get any kind of brilliance or sharpness or any harshness in the high frequency. You can just play them as loud as possible and you can just crank them up um, in any track and you will be just having a great, great time and great, great impact. In fact, I found it to be too closed off on the top end, so I had to actually crank up the high frequency. Um, now, of course, you have the mid high frequency and the ultra high frequency uh, adjustments here, and it's very, very minimal, but you can adjust it. Right now, we have the ultra high frequency cranked up to the maximum, and I find it just adequate. So I'm gonna play a track where it can get a little bit bright on the top end when you crank it up. Now I have it pretty cranked up right now and I'll play them for you and we'll see if you find it bright through your headphones or speakers. Baby, I can't make a 
So this is a track where if I play on some speakers and crank it up, it can become a little bit bright because he goes really high with his voice. And as you heard, uh, the JBL4429 really has no brilliance whatsoever. Uh, when Even when cranked up to its maximum, literally house, house shaking levels, there is no brilliance whatsoever. So this is a really, really good speaker to really party. Now the downside of this speaker being so good at high volume is that it's terrible at low volumes. And when I say it's terrible, I mean it's not for low listening level at all. Uh, in fact, to really get anything out of these speakers in terms of bass and uh, finesse, you need to crank it up to about medium volume at uh, like about 70 dB to have that kind of uh, rock and roll experience. Now, the very good thing about the speaker, and I, th I think you may have heard it in that track as well, is bass response. The bass response is phenomenal. Um, I don't think you need a subwoofer with this speaker at all. It is very, very dynamic, very, very, you know, incredible at loud volumes. Now, I'm gonna play a drum track for you, and uh, <laughs> it's incredible. It smacks you in the head, and it, the bass grasp, the control is fantastic on the speaker. And that way is better than my JBL L300. The JBL L300 is more extended in the high frequency, whereas these are a little bit more bass heavy and a little bit more smooth in the mid range. So I'm gonna play this drum track for you now. So as you probably heard there, the drum track is phenomenal. It smacks and punches um, with really this kind of type of roundness to them. And I really like that about these speakers, the roundness, the impact that feels that the feel that you get in your chest um, is all there with the speaker. Now, another thing that the speaker does very, very well is the mid range. The mid range is also very, very smooth. Um, even when you crank it up, like I said, it's very, very smooth. And I really, really like that, like that about these speakers. It's not an audiophile speaker where you have every placement and stuff like that, but it's more of a uh, finesse speaker where you party and rock and roll to it. Now I'm gonna play a track that has this type of uh, strings and, and quite a little, little bit going on. And you can listen to the smoothness and the, uh, the, the naturalness of the instruments as you hear them. Now that's not a concert type of experience. You're not gonna hear exactly uh, that way. It's a little bit colored and I kind of like the like that kind of color because it makes things a little bit more musical and natural in my opinion. So here we go.
So as you can probably hear there, there's a lot of um, kind of naturalness to the strings and a lot of um, easy to listen to when you're even hearing these strings uh, scraping and so forth. Um, it's just a very natural sound. So this is what I heard with a speaker. Um, now in terms of sound stage and imaging, the imaging is nowhere to be really found uh, on the speaker. Th this is not a speaker for imaging. It has a wide dispersion angle um, and it does play very well when you're in the kitchen or just running about. And so it's not really for that kind of, you know, single person sit down and perfect imaging type of speaker. So if imaging is pinpoint imaging is important for you, this is not really the speaker to go to. Now with that being said, I found this speaker to have a very natural and large sound stage, throws a big wall in front of you. And I really like that about these speakers. And especially when you're watching a movie and I was using this for home theater purpose as well. And I found that when I was using it for home theater use, uh, it was very, very excellent. It had this uh, grippiness to it and the male vocals had this uh, throatiness to it that you see in some pro speakers and um, some some more kind of uh, uh, British type of speakers and I found this to be an excellent excellent sound uh, especially when watching movies I was a very immersive experience with that with that large sound stage going and you could really crank it up and have a very very good immersive um, home theater experience now of course the bass you didn't really need a subwoofer but you could add a subwoofer if you really really wanted to for that 2.1 or 5.1 or 7.1 setup. Now I'm gonna play this one last track for you and of course um, I'm gonna end it with a commentary. Last track is going to be more of a rock and roll style uh, type of sound and this can get really bright really quickly with some speakers and get really messy. Uh, on this speaker, that's nowhere to be found. It's very, very organized and very, very impressively impactful. So that was a track very, very easy to kind of understand, right? Uh, that's a track where you can get really bright really quickly and kind of messy. And on this track, uh, on this speakers, it was no problem cranking them up. It was very impactful and very, very um, easy to listen to. So again, this is not really an audio file speaker or kind of perfect imaging or anything like that. This is really just kick back, listen and rock and roll kind of speaker, which I really like about, okay? Um, now. Now let's get into some of the comparisons. Now a lot of you guys are asking me how does it compare to the Tecton, uh, namely the double impacts. And I would have to say that they're more closely uh, compared with the Pendragons despite the price point. The Tecton Pendragons are about 1800 USD, while these uh, big boys, the 4429s, are about 4 grand USD. Uh, despite the price difference, the sound signature is more or less comparable to the Pendragons. The Tecton Pendragons have similar bass impact, uh, worm, um, uh, warmness to them and black notes in between and so on and so forth with a little bit hint of better high frequency extension in my opinion. Now one place the JBL 4429 wins is the ability to crank things up and really um, the tonality is excellent on these speakers more so than the Pendragons in my opinion. So in that regard, the JBL 4429 wins there. Now, the other factor is that the Pendragons are taller and tower speakers, while these are a little bit smaller and, uh, <laughs> I don't want to say compact, but a little bit more compact than the Pendragons. And uh, the reality is that these are smaller, but comparable in terms of impact and uh, bass response and so on and so forth. And the ability to, ability to fill the room is very comparable. 
Now, the other comparison that people have been asking is the tecton double impacts. And the tecton double impacts are have a better uh, high frequency extension, it's more airy, and it's a little bit more tilted towards the treble and um, has better separation, imaging, and so forth than the JBL4429. In terms of base response, the base response, the tecton double impacts have a very impactful mid base response, more so than the JBL4429, um, but all, again, very, very similar, similar and minute differences, whereas the JBL4429 has a better uh, sub-base extension down into uh, the lower region of the frequencies, in my opinion. Now, comparing this to directly to um, something like the Klipsch Cornwall 3s, which is a speaker that is comparable in price range, um, but not really comparable in size. The Cornwall 3s are much bigger speakers than the JBL4429 standing over here. Um, the Cornwalls, I believe, is a little bit more lively sound. It fills the room better um, and has a slightly more controlled bass and a more linear uh, response in the bass region. While these can arguably, you know, to some people, a bit more boomy and a little bit more you know, uh, impactful sound in terms of the bass region. So it's a give and take, and I believe that the Cornwalls can be a little bit more lively and exciting uh, for those looking for that kind of horn design speakers. Whereas these are kind of a kind of a curveball in terms of you know, it's a horn design, but it's really not. Uh, it doesn't really sound like a horn design. Um, and so there's that, it's not harsh in any way. I love the speakers um, for different reasons than I would have imagined. And the last but not the least, I think the best thing about these speakers is that there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it in the market that has this type of sound that's so easy to listen to, yet has all the details, yet it never gets sharp. That is a very, very impressive thing to do, and I have to really, really you know, love these speakers for that. Uh, so for those of you that really wanna rock and roll with you know, no detail loss and doesn't sound crappy, um, high, by a speaker, but not really for audio files. This is a very, very phenomenal choice of a speaker. So there you have it guys, thank you for watching. And I hope you guys kind of uh, get the idea of what I'm trying to do here with my reviews now. And I'll see you guys in the next one.